Hello, FNAFers! The Atom Spring has come and started the FNAF movie news. Because it seems like the news that were dangerously close has finally come. A few days ago, Jason Blum made a couple of tweets saying, People, please be close to Twitter, because things are about to go down on my feed. Don't panic, but be ready, please. And then, not so long after, he tweeted this. Jim Henson's Creature Shop is working on our animatronics. Emma Tammy is our director. Filming on FNAF starts in February 2023. Boom! Yes, you heard that correctly. Not only do we now know who is the director of the film, but we now know when the filming for the movie will finally start. Last month we found out that Jim Henson's Creature Shop who worked on Star Wars and Harry Potter props as well as the Muppets will be making the animatronic costumes for the movie. And now we know that Emma Tammy will be directing the movie. She has been directing horror films like The Wind and Into the Dark since 2014, which is not that long which means that Scott would have more control over the movie. Last month, I presumed that the movie will come out in late 2023, because not so long ago they did not have a director, and only now started on the animatronics, which means that they are still in pre-production, and presumably they would start filming in early 2023. And it seems like I was right. It is said that the movie will begin filming in February of 2023, which means that if everything will go as planned, then the movie will come out either in late 2023 or early 2024. Not so long after the tweet, an interview from the Hollywood Reporter has been posted, and it revealed that Russell Binder will be the executive producer for the movie who worked on The Creep Show and Monsters of California. It also said that the script is worked on by Scott Cuthin, Emma Tammy, and Seth Kadebeck. Seth Kadebeck has written short films like Fates with Age and Death Range from 2008 and 2009. Now, here are some quotes from Emma, Jason, and Scott himself. Stepping into the rich, terrifying world of Redis alongside Scott Cotton, Blumhouse and Jim Henson's Creature Shop is beyond thrilling. I cannot wait for audience to immerse themselves in the wild and wonderful playground we are creating. Third director Tammy. Five Nights of Redis is more constantly asked about than any other film we've ever worked on and I'm thrilled to confirm it's finally happening. With Emma Tammy at the helm, we are committed to making Scott's vision of the movie come to life. Rest assured, it will be an ease worth the wait," said Jason Blum. In meeting with Emma, I felt she had a great understanding of the franchise and really felt that she could grasp something that would please the fanbase and keep people on the edge of their seats. That cotton. Now, the video would have ended here, but a few days after I wrote the script, we got more information and what seems to be a hoax or a leak. So let's cover them real quick. Now let's first start with the production weekly report. In it we find out that the filming will start February 1st, which means that we might get information for the cast really, really soon before the year would end. And it is said that the filming will take place in Louisiana. Along with it we get the names of two more people, who are Terry Taylor and Sergeant Lindo and a description of what the movie will be about. Follows a night security guard as he begins working at Ray Fazbear's Pizza. While spending his first night on the job, he realizes the gig won't be so easy, as the animatronic animals that entertain kids during the day play their own sinister games at night. Last time we've heard about a movie script it was called Mike, 
perhaps meaning that the movie would be about Mike. And I think it would be a safe guess that it still is. And that this new Nygaard is Michael Afton. From this, it seems like we will see how Mike started to work at pizzerias and how he found out about the animatronics of being alive. And it seems like the pizzeria would be still open during the plot, as it mentions that the animatronics still entertain kids. The first pizzeria we think Mike went to was FNAF 2, but we saw the FNAF 1 suits being made and not the toys. And also Scott once said that he wanted the movie to be based on FNAF 1 as it had the right atmosphere and would be a great introduction to new fans. So what if the movie will actually make FNAF 1 be Mike's first job? Or uh, Mike will be Mike Schmidt and he will have no connection to Michael Afton. Um, but only time will tell. Ok, now on to the sketch part. But before that, I want to ask you to please subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my videos and press that like button with that bell. Before this report, Geek Vibe Nation posted a leak information about the movie, but they don't actually tell us where they got that information and don't want to answer. Also, people have noticed that the article had a lot of misspelling and grammar errors when it was posted, which does not sound professional. So take their information with a medium grain of salt. It says that the filming will be February 1st and in Louisiana, which the report later actually confirmed, which means that the information told here does have some truth to it. It tells us about the three characters that the movie will have. The male lead Mike is in his mid-twenties to early thirties. His character description lends to some plot points for the movie. Riddled with guilt of a tragedy in his past and now struggling to take care of his younger sister on his own, Mike is low on options when he lands a new job to pay the bills the night security guard at Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria. Mike is vulnerable with a tough exterior, though he means well, his obsession with digging for the truth may have potentially disastrous consequences. Now, this does fit with what we know for sure, that Mike does not know about the secrets yet and that he's just started working at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, presumably the FNAF 1 building. But it also talks about a tragedy that he feels guilty of. There has been ongoing debates with Mike being the bully or the crying child. If the information would be true, then it could confirm that Mike is the bully from Tough 4. And I don't think a big debate solver like this would be told to us so early, even in a leak. But anyways, let's get onto the more skeptical part of the leak. Mike's younger sister Abby is inquisitive and brave, with creative mind and keen intuition. A bit of a loner who keeps her thoughts and feelings close to her chest. She expresses herself primarily through the drawings, growing up without her parents while being raised by her unreliable brother, Abby has learned to fend for herself. That said, she is still very much a child, emotionally vulnerable, full of imagination and not without the normal outburst of a 10 year old. Now, the only sister of Mike that we know about is Elizabeth, whose name is not Abby and who grew up with at least her father until she died because of his creation baby, which if we swap the first two letters around would be called Abby. As you see, there are some inconsistencies that don't really fit with Elizabeth, but we see here that Abby is 10 and if the movie takes place during FNAF 1, which is in one of the theories in 1993, then that means that Abby would be born in 1983, aka the year of FNAF 4, 
where we see an empty girl bedroom. A lot of people because of this think that Elizabeth dies before the bat. But if she was born in that year, then maybe the room is empty because it is only getting prepared for the birth of Elizabeth. This would all be a big change if the information is true. Another option here is that Abby is not Elizabeth, but is actually just an abandoned child that Mike found and raised as a sister. Or maybe Mike from the movie is actually not Michael Afton at all, which would explain why we get Abby out of nowhere. And now for the most unfitting character in the league. Female supporting lead, Vanessa. Twice. Vanessa is a police officer who shows up during one of the Mike's workshops while leading with a bright and sunny disposition. Vanessa has a keen understanding of the dark history and inner workings of the restaurant, not wanting to reveal too much of what she may know. She works to help Mike survive the night. Now, this sounds most uncanny from the story we all know and love as we don't actually meet Vanessa until FNAF 9, which is in the far future. This could be her mom, or she has been added just so the movie had relevance with new games. But really, I think Vanessa won't actually be in the movie. I think the person who is being described here is actually phone guy, and that the Vanessa information here might be just a fake out. Scott wanted to make the movie around the first games and the script has been changed multiple times because they did not represent what FNAF was, they did not fit. And I don't think Scott would add Vanessa here or maybe even Abby. I believe that we do get some true information here, but it is mixed with fake information so we did not solve the movie before it came out. But this all could be true as well, so keep that thought in mind, as well as it may be lying to us. Now, before the video ends, I want to tell you all that this Friday will be my birthday. Yahoo! But anyways, tell me in the comments what you think about this and what you think we're going to see in the film. Or you can join my Discord server in the description and talk about it there. But for now, that's it. Subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my videos. Press that like button without a bell. And remember, I always come back.